Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Large Father Tall Headwear here. Over the last few months or two on the channel, we have continued to look at the rather unique history of WWF No Mercy, one of, if not the most critically acclaimed wrestling game of all time, with many people deeming it simply the greatest wrestling game ever made. While this game continues to be celebrated, not everyone is aware that at one point in time it was set to receive a sequel on the Nintendo 64, named WWF Backlash, a story we have already covered on here in the past. Lining up forecast release timescales for Backlash, it very much appears likely that the title would have featured a roster of characters who appeared in the ridiculous WCW ECW invasion angle that the WWF company ran in 2001. While this was never to be, fortunately fans within the No Mercy modding community would kind of make Backlash a sort of reality themselves by creating the fan mod known as WWF Invasion, an entire modification for the classic game that celebrated this obtuse time frame in wrestling. In today's episode, we are going to go back and look at this more than strange period in wrestling history, and more importantly, spotlight this great modification that further celebrates this era. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the mad story of the WWF Invasion No Mercy game. Yeah! Throughout the 1990s, wrestling promotions WWF and WCW would consistently take jabs at one another live on television in a war for brand supremacy. The two companies would regularly steal talent from one another and compete for ratings as each vied to become the top promotion in the world. As all of this was unfolding, wrestling fans everywhere would dream of interpromotional matches between the two entities, from the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin vs Goldberg, to The Undertaker vs Sting, to the NWO vs DX. The amount of fantasy scenarios that could be conceptualised from such events were endless. In early 2001, to the shock of many, these dreams would actually become a reality when the WWF's Vince McMahon would purchase WCW and take ownership of the brand. As expected, this would inspire armchair bookers everywhere to frantically make their own predictions with regards to what might unfold on screen. However, as great as a WWF vs WCW war story was on paper, many today feel that the way WWF would handle all of this on television would result in perhaps the biggest letdown in the entire history of pro wrestling itself. For those who are not as heavily into wrestling as most, think of this as the wrestling equivalent to the Star Wars sequel trilogy. WWF vs WCW and the sequel Star Wars movies were things that fans craved for years, but never believed either would actually happen. But when these things both really did happen, the creatives behind both of these scenarios would unleash on the planet some of the most contrived, nonsensical, boring rubbish that has ever been created. While everyone dreamed of seeing WCW's big main eventers come to fight the WWF, due to contractual issues, the WCW that were represented on screen were a shell of their former self, with the biggest stars remaining representing the brand being Booker T and DDP, rather than the likes of Sting, Goldberg, Hogan or prominent NWO members. In fact, to even position WCW as a legitimate threat to the more established WWF roster members, they would have to first contrivedly book them in a storyline where they would form an alliance with ECW, a company who had historically always collaborated with the WWF, who despised WCW in real life. But to make matters worse, WWF thought it would be necessary to have some of their own top stars like Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kurt Angle defect to lead the WCW ECW alliance and give the group much needed actual star power. Basically, the angle everyone had wanted for years never actually really happened, as WWF vs WCW instead turned into top WWF stars vs top WWF stars, stuff we had seen on television many, many times before. What an absolute pathetically wasted opportunity, eh? Despite the extreme amount of lost potential in this era, there were of course still positives that could be experienced through watching all of this. 
Throughout it, it always felt like something special was about to happen, even though it never truly did. And we got to see the largest influx of new wrestlers on WWF television in all of history from what I can recall. And laced in between all of this nonsense, there was still a fair share of fun and memorable moments such as Kurt Angle's first run as a prominent babyface, who was really easy to get behind, the rise to popularity of Rob Van Dam, who would go from a mid-carter to a main eventer in a mere matter of months, and the emergence of the Hurricane character, who over time would become a much beloved on-screen character. Even later, having a fun mini-feud with The Rock. While all of this madness was unfolding on our TV sets, the roster of wrestlers now featured in the WWF games we were playing on consoles immediately became very dated, and we would all have to use creator wrestler modes in order to be able to play as many of our favourite Alliance members. The Christmas after the invasion, I remember WWF Smackdown just bring it debuting on the PlayStation 2, and while the graphics looked fantastic for the time, it was disappointing to see how shallow the roster was in comparison to what could be seen on television, with not an Alliance member in sight. In fact, all of the wrestlers who had debuted through this period would not start popping up in video games until the likes of Smackdown Shut Your Mouth or WrestleMania 18 and by this point the invasion angle had long gone. The opportunity had been missed in officially encapsulating these strange six months in video game form. As stated, looking back at dates, it seems as if there is a chance that WWF backlash for the Nintendo 64 could have potentially included all of this. But with this late system release being scrapped, none of us will ever know to be sure. As mentioned at the start of the video, this is of course where the Invasion mod comes in, giving us a potential glimpse what the Invasion in video game form had the potential to actually look like. Like with many great No Mercy fan projects, the modders in charge would give WWF Invasion its own custom menu screen showcasing a few memorable roster members from this missing time period in wrestling video game history, including the Alliance's very own MVP Canyon. After all, who better than Canyon? More impressive than this though is the detail that has been put into all the different arenas that have been included in the game, bringing faithful recreations to the table of many awesome backdrops from 2001, including pre-invasion pay-per-view setting WrestleMania 17, a show that many people classify as the most memorable wrestling show of all time. So while most things about the year 2001 are truly awful, not everything was terrible. When it comes to recreating the invasion in video game form though, of course by far the most important thing is of course the roster. This recreation of the invasion 100% manages to deliver in such a category, pretty much including every wrestler who was featured throughout this historic angle. The game's character select screen even breaks the selection up into two categories to make it easy to identify which side each wrestler you choose to play as represents, whether it be Team WWF or Team WCW ECW. Literally everyone you would expect to see here is fortunately included, legitimately making this title feel even more like the real deal. A particularly impressive feature when it comes to these wrestlers is not only do 95% of them have their own avatars on the character select screen, but each of them also appear to have had their real faces ported into the game as well, making this title feel all the more authentic. I think what truly makes the WWF Invasion mod so special though, and more desirable than a great deal of No Mercy mods, is that through using No Mercy's Creator Wrestler mode back in 2001, this is basically the game that we would use No Mercy's inbuilt features to scramble, to desperately try and create even though the assets were not really there, making our ambitions rather unachievable. But nonetheless, there is no denying whatsoever that we would all try our utmost to create Booker T and RDD within this Nintendo 64 game, even if for all our best efforts, they would both end up looking bootleg as hell. WWF Invasion on the other hand is the 2001 video game that all us wrestling fans dreamed of. No Mercy was just so freaking good that we could not wait for the next wrestling game, and this Invasion mod is kind of how I would gather most of us would have imagined the next game in the series to have looked like. This game is almost eerie to look at as I genuinely feel like I am looking into my own brain back in 2001. This is the game we all desperately craved, even if what was going on on our actual TV screens 
was rather underwhelming and disappointing retrospectively. At least we all had no mercy to enjoy that depressing year to keep us all sane. I guess it all could have been worse. At least it wasn't 2020. So you know what my watch is saying right now? It is time for you to find a copy of WWF Invasion mod online, dust it off, turn it sideways and stick it right in your Project 64 emulator. If you smell what Top Hat says so. It's true, it's true that the Invasion mod will bring you gaming nostalgia to the table for something you may not even realise that you are nostalgic for. What makes this experience so unique is that this feels like a game we craved for desperately 20 years ago, and now in a way, is finally actually here. Which is so bizarre to me really, but a constant reminder that fans of video games will continue to plug the gaps in history that corporations never got round to fulfilling. For this reason I think this mod is pretty special and celebrates a unique time in wrestling history whether you loved or even more likely despised this utterly bizarre time frame. For all its faults and issues, no one can deny the invasion angle though was not memorable, as I can pretty much recall everything that's unfolded within that car crash storyline. I can't really say I actually remember anything that has happened on WWE TV in the last decade. It has all been so similar, it all just blurs into one. So relive your invasion memories by playing the No Mercy Invasion mod. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of a WWF Invasion and its amazing little No Mercy mod that seeps with nostalgia. If you enjoyed today's video and you have liked these trips into No Mercy mods and wrestling's past, let me know in the comment section if there are any modifications you would be keen to see me spotlight on here next. If you are new here, why not check out my video covering the original No Mercy video game, the planned Backlash sequel, or even the brand new AEW mod. I have videos covering all of these subjects currently available on the channel. Make sure you hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell to ensure you do not miss the next episode in this sub-series either. So special thank yous go out to Sebastian Villas, The Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heyo, Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey Omar Sr., Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, and Ryan Dinched, Evan Baller, Philip Manth, Azarakai, Keith Ferguson, Jockin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, EC Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Aaron McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification, Monkey Man, Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sanghi, Felicio, Langston Miller, New Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Rene, Marino Liga, TOG Driver, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Vion, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Casey Wright, Since Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bozanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, August Piazza, and everybody else who backs my work over on the Patreon platform. It is all very much appreciated. Thank you. Cheerio.